Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we have a general equation for the heat transfer across the what we would call the insulation portion of a cylindrical object, let's now try to model a thermos bottle. A bottle in which we have hot liquid and what we want to know is if the liquid starts at a temperature of 90 degrees centigrade, let's say a hot pot of coffee, uh, how long will it take before the temperature will drop to 50 degrees centigrade? Now, what are the specifics about the thermos bottle? Well, it contains one liter of the coffee. That means the mass is about 1,000 grams. The specific heat for water is one calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And of course, the amount of heat contained within the liquid. Q would be mc times T. And if we then put that into a differential equation, the heat loss, dQ dt, is going to be equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change of the temp temperature per unit time. The conductivity constant for the insulation around the thermos bottle is 2 times 10 to the minus 5 calories per second per centimeter per degree centigrade. So it's a good insulator. And let's say that the outside temperature is at 20 degrees centigrade, about room temperature. The height of the bottle is 30 centimeters. The inner diameter and the outer diameter, or I should say inner radius and outer radius, are 4 and 4.5 four and centimeters. So how do we do that? How do we calculate the time that it will take for the liquid to go from 90 degrees centigrade down to 50 degrees centigrade? Well, we're going to set this equation for the heat loss of the liquid, dQ dt, equal to this equation right here, which expresses the amount of heat radiated across the insulating material from the inside to the outside. So when we set these two equal to one another, then we have on the left side, k times 2 pi L divided by the natural log of the ratio of the outer to the inner radius times the difference in the temperature. Now, Ta is going to be a variable temperature, so let's call that T minus Tb, which is a constant temperature of 20 degrees. And uh, that's going to be equal to the right side equation, which is going to be mc dt over dt. That's temperature over time. So now what we want to do is we have a differential equation. We want to separate the variables. Put the temperature on the right side, the time on the left side, and let's move all the constants on the left side. So that means on the left side we end up with k 2 pi L divided by mc times the natural log of b over a. And that's going to be times dt. On the right side we're going to have d temperature dt divided by t minus 20. So you can see we now have a differential equation. But let's just put that into a single number because these are all constants. So we can actually simplify that by finding a single number for that. And if we do that, uh, let's do that on the side right here. So k times 2 pi L divided by mc times the natural log of b over a can be written as k 2 times 10 to the minus 5 times 2 pi times the length of 30, and since everything is in centimeters and calories, we can keep the 30. Denominator, that's 1,000 grams. C for liquid, like water, is 1, times the natural log of 4.5 over 4. And so all this is going to turn into a single numerical constant that will make it easier to work out the equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 2 e to the 5 minus times 2 times pi times 30 divided by 1000 and divide by 4.5 divided by 4 take the natural log of that equals and that gives us 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 all right so it gives us 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 that's the constant that is represented by this whole thing right here. So now when we replace that, we end up with 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 times dt is equal to d big T divided by t minus 20. And now we're able to integrate both sides. This is from 0 to t, the time that we're trying to find. And the temperature is going to change from 90 down to 50. All right. So this is going to be... Um, uh, time from 0 to t 
is equal to, I'll bring this down in the denominator, this is 1 over 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 times, this will be uh, the integral of that, that would be the natural log of t minus 20, and we're going to evaluate that from 90 to 50. All right, so now this will simply become time, so time is equal to 1 over 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5, and then if we plug in the upper limit, we get 50 minus 20, which is 30, that's a natural log of 30, minus, when we plug in the lower limit, that's 90 minus 20, which is a natural log of 70. And so the time is going to be equal to 1 over 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5 times the natural log of the ratio of 30 divided by 70. Now I know that this will definitely give us a negative number, but we're looking for the absolute value, the time that it takes to go through that time or that temperature change. And where's my calculator? Right here. So take the inverse of that. So we take the inverse. And now we multiply that times 3 divided by 7. Ooh, I don't think that went quite well. Let me try it again. So 3 divided by 7 equals, take the natural, 3 divided by 7 equals. Take the natural log of that, and then multiply, that's a negative number, multiply that times, or divide that by 3.2 e to the 5 minus equals. And that gives us a period of 26,478 seconds. All right, so we're going to take the absolute value of that. So we'll take the absolute value of this number right here. And that gives us 26,478. 26,478. Of course, that would be in seconds. Now, if we divide that by 60, divide by 60, that gives us 441 minutes. And that would still be pretty good. So if a thermos bottle can keep your liquid warm, the, the hot coffee warm, for 441 minutes, mm, that's about, you know, six, seven hours, six, yeah, about six or seven hours, and still keep it at 50 degrees centigrade, that's a pretty thermos bottle. And so that's the basic model of how a bottle like that works. So again, we take this equation, which is the general equation for the heat transfer through a insulating material around the cylindrical object, and set the equal to the heat loss of the liquid that's inside, the QDT, and then we find the differential equation, integrate, and there's the answer, and that's how it's done.